Understanding IPv6 is a very important topic because of the fact that IP version 4 has a very limited lifespan. Now, IP version 4 in and of itself has about 4.3 billion addresses within that address space. Now, that might seem like a lot of addresses, but really, when you look at all of the address space that's not usable, there's about 3.7 billion addresses that are usable. So there's a significant number of addresses that are not able to be assigned to end devices. With the rapid growth of the internet, IP version 4 has been grown out of. So IP version 6 has actually been in development for quite some time now, many, many years. We've always known that we were going to run out of IP version 4 addresses, but the big difficulty in getting folks to use IPv6 and to adopt it has been the fact that there is so much developed around IP version 4. There are so many devices that have IP version 4 built into their protocol stack that it was easier to find workarounds to extend the life of IP version 4, things like network address translation, DHCP, and so on that we really didn't have to move to IPv6 in a very quick manner. We've had many, many years to perform a migration to IP version 6. But there are differences between IP version 4 and IP version 6. These are network layer protocols. They're designed for logical addressing and path determination, so they do the same thing. But IP version 6, since it was developed with the thought in mind that we were limited in our IP address space, we were able to look at IPv6 and, since we were redesigning the protocol, make some modifications that made it even more efficient than IP version 4 is. So in other words, we've learned from our mistakes. Now let's just compare our headers. So on the left-hand side here, you see an IP version 4 header. And we've already discussed these fields inside the header. Let's just look at the differences between IP version 4 and IP version 6. Well, right off the bat, you'll notice that in IP version 4, we do have a version field. And you know what? We have a version field in IP version 6 as well. IPv4 has an IP header length, and we don't need that field anymore in IPv6. And so that field was not kept. It was just simply removed, which reduces the size or the overhead involved in this header. The next field that we have in IP version 4 is that type of service field. Now we don't have a type of service field, but rather we've renamed it and sort of changed the position in IP version 6, and that's now called the traffic class field. And that traffic class is very similar to the type of service field in an IP version 4 header. We can mark things with DSCP values, differentiated service code points, or IP presidents, and things of that nature. So we can use it for quality of service. Now next in IP version 4, we have the total length. In IP version 6, we have the payload length. We don't have the total length. We have the payload length, length of the payload here. So the name and the position was changed. We have a time to live value in IP version 4. We call that a hop limit in IPv6, but again, that's designed to prevent routing loops. Next, we have a protocol field in IP version 4. And so rather than call that the protocol field, we have what's called the next header field. Now, the next header can point to a layer 4 header. And so it could be TCP or UDP that it points to. Or it could point to another header that's used at layer 3, like a routing header. So the functionality was changed just a bit there. You do notice that there were a number of fields that were left out. The identification, the flags, the fragment offset, the header checksum. Why were these left out? Well, let's talk about identification, flags, and fragment offset. Well, those fields were used for fragmenting the packet. In IP version 6, the responsibility for fragmentation lies with the host. The host can do a path MTU discovery prior to sending packets and figure out what size it should send those packets rather than waiting for the network to fragment those packets. So that's why we don't have that fragmentation offset flags and identification field present in the IPv6 header. 
We don't have a header checksum because we're going to rely on the upper layer protocol, TCP and UDP, to perform the checksum. Now we have our source and our destination address. Now the difference here, you'll notice it's a much larger field in IPv6. That's because it's a 128-bit address versus a 32-bit address. So we're going to have 256 bits of addressing. The source address is 128. The destination address is 128. But that's okay. That's exactly what it needs to be. We don't have any options or padding. We don't need to pad these fields here. The header is what the header is. Now we do have one more field that's a brand new field in IP version 6. This is called the flow label and we can use this. Some folks will say that we'll use that to identify flows of traffic which could be used in a quality of service implementation or something to that degree. So that's a comparison between the IP version 4 and the IP version 6 header. The big takeaway here is that the IPv6 header has been simplified. Now we have many attacks that target the fields of an IP version 4 header. So if those fields exist in IPv6, then they can still be an attack vector. If somebody were to change the next header field, they could point to another header that gives different information than what we originally intended. But working as a security analyst, you'll need to be able to identify addresses so that you can track down things that are going on in the network. You'll need to understand the IPv6 address format. Now, we represent it as a hexadecimal value. Each hexadecimal field is 16 bits. These are case insensitive, being that we are using hex values, so it's case insensitive. We don't really care whether it's uppercase or lowercase. That makes no difference. And so we're going to have a combination of letters and numbers. When we look at one of these 16-bit fields, if there are leading zeros in that field, those are optional. And the reason that those are optional is because we are delineating each field with a colon. If we leave off the leading zeros in a field, then the protocol is smart enough to simply fill in those leading zeros so that we end up with a 16-bit hexadecimal field. Now let's say that we have multiple 16-bit fields that are a zero value. Well, we can take a shortcut there and represent those with this double colon, but we can only use that once in an address. And the reason is that the protocol will insert zeros where that double colon is until the entire address is 128 bits. So if we used it twice in an address, then the protocol would not understand whether it should put 32 zeros in this field and 8 in another field. It wouldn't understand how many zeros to use in a field. So if we use it only once, then it knows I just fill in zeros here until the address is 128 bits. But let's take a look at an IPv6 address example. As you'll learn with IPv6, there are multiple address types. One of the most common address types that we work with is unicast. Unicast is used for one-to-one -one communication. So in this example, we have a IPv6 unicast address. And that address here is 2001 colon 0000 colon 130F colon 0000 colon 0000 colon 09C0 colon 876A colon 130B. Now, when you listen to that address, you're thinking, that's pretty hard to remember that. It's not like you can ask somebody to try to ping your address at 192.168.1.1. An IPv6 address is a mouthful. So we can abbreviate some of this and simplify that address just a little bit here. So let's see how we do that. First of all, we can leave off the leading zeros in a field. And in this example here, we've done that. 2001 colon 0. So we know that we need to fill that in until it's a 16-bit field with zeros. Colon 130F. Now we're going to use that shortcut, that double colon. We're going to fill that in with zeros. And you can see from the original address that that makes sense to do. Then we're going to do the 9C0 colon. 
And in that 9C0 field, we've left the leading zero out. And that's okay because we've used that double colon, so it's going to know to fill in enough zeros for that to expand properly. The next field is the 876A colon 130B. So now saying that address is a little bit easier. 2001 colon 0 colon 130F colon colon 9C0 colon 876A colon 130B. Still a little longer than an IPv4 address, but we can use things like DNS to simplify the resolution. We also have multicast addresses. Multicast is for one-to-many communication, and that's represented with the FF01 address that you see here. FF01 colon 0 colon 0 colon 0 colon 0 colon 0 colon 0 colon 1. Now we could abbreviate that and we could say FF01 colon colon 1 and IPv6 would be smart enough to expand that. Now in IP version 4 we have a loopback address that's 127.0.0.1. We use that to test our IP stack and make sure that we can ping ourselves and it allows for communication within our own system. We also have the concept of that address in IPv6 and that loopback address is 0 colon 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 1. Again that's a mouthful and we can abbreviate that with the double colon 1 and that's our loopback address. Finally an unspecified address would be all zeros and we'll abbreviate that with the use of two colons. One implementation of that would be in a default route. In a default route, to get to anywhere or to get to any unspecified address, we want to send our traffic to a default gateway. In this case, we could say IPv6 route colon colon and then give it the default gateway's address. This is just an example of our IPv6 address format, but again, understanding it is extremely beneficial for a security analyst as you'll be looking at packet captures on a network that will likely carry both IPv4 and IPv6 traffic.